Welcome to the Purple Mash webinar on how to create your own spelling, grammar and punctuation resources for your class. In this webinar, we will look at how you can use the Purple Mash tools and resources to create your own spelling activities, grammar activities and punctuation resources for your class to complete and how to set them as very simple tasks using the to do feature. We'll also look at how you can track, record and assess your pupil work using the data dashboard. Firstly, let's have a look at the wide range of pre-made spelling, grammar and punctuation activities available in Purple Mash. You can either use these activities as they stand or you can edit these to create your own bespoke activities for your class. I'm going to start by looking at the Purple Mash spelling resources that are pre-made available for you in a comprehensive program of teaching spelling from year one all the way up to year six. We also have our own spelling quiz using a tool called Two Quiz, where you can create your own spelling quizzes, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Firstly, these pre-made plans and resources are here for teachers to use with their class across each half term week throughout the school year. In each week across each half term, it focuses on different spelling patterns straight from the national curriculum. There is a quiz for each week, a printable dictation, including the words for that week with the answers, and a look, cover, say, write, check, check printable activity. So let's have a look at the quiz that the children can use. You can set these as to-dos for your class if you want them to access it very quickly using the to-do process, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later on. But let's launch the app to see very quickly what a quiz looks like. The children have the options to select how long they want to see the word for in a look, cover, say, write, check way. If they want to drag the letter tiles or keyboard entry there, they can choose that also. If I click Annoy. play, you firstly hear the word. If you miss it the first time, Annoy. you can click on the speaker op option at the bottom. And then you drag the letters into the screen here to spell the word. And if I've done it correctly, I click done. Dream. And next, and it will read me the next word. I'm going to come out of there. So that's an example of using the quizzes for each half termly week. There are pre made quizzes for you for the children to complete. And from year three up, there are also half termly assessment quizzes that you can use to set as examples for your children to see how well they're doing with their spelling. So these pre-made spelling resources offer teachers a comprehensive program of teaching spelling from year one to six using the words from the national curriculum. Now if you want to create your own spelling quiz for your class you can do so using this tool here. I'm going to launch the app and it very quickly guides you through how to use two quiz to create your own spelling test. I click the next button here, it will guide me through this edit question button. If I add a question here, I simply type in the words that I want to be in my spelling test and I just put a space bar between each of them. I'm going to focus on the, the op sound. There we go, I've now got six words in my spelling test. My options at the bottom here are where the children either drag the tiles in, as you saw in the previous example, or they can use the letters on the keyboard. How long will the children see the word for on the screen? Five seconds is the default option. And the other settings here include adding trick letters, which will put a number of different options in there that the children have to select. So I'm going to click OK here, and this is what my spelling quiz looks like. And it will be randomly generated these six words along here. Now, first of all, if I play that, you can see I've got no title and I've got no instructions on there. I could play it and the children will have five seconds before a little animation gets rid of the word for me. And as I selected keyboard entry, the children will have to use the keyboard itself to type in the letters and will receive their feedback instantly. I'm going to press stop there and go back to the options. I need to use my intro screen button here to write my title. I can put in an image here if I like. There's all sorts of images in here. And I can change the option, options at the bottom, the time limit, the sounds, the incorrect sound and the completed sound. And I can add my instructions in here. Now, if you want to, you can also add a voiceover to that where I could record my voice here very easily. Can you spell these op words correctly? That will now add a speaker icon onto the home page for the children who need that. There are a number, number of other options at the top here that you can edit as a teacher before you save this. 
for your class. The animation style will enable you to work out change either the word fades out after a specific time or the animation hides it. I'll do the fading option this time and I can change again the option of how long the words will be viewed for on the screen, whether I do keyboard entry or drag and drop. If you want to add a voiceover for each of the words that are displayed you can so I could type say my own word here shop now if I press play can you spell these op words correctly shop there we go so that is my quiz I'm going to press the stop button there that is my quiz for my class to complete so first of all in order for my class to access this quiz I'm going to save it first I'm going to save it in my teacher folder my work folder belongs to the person who's logged in so I'm logged in as the teacher and I'm going to save this with a file name op spelling quiz there we are now if I want my class to actually complete this quiz easily from their home page I need to set it as a to-do for my class so I'm going to use the drop down menu again click on my share button and use this option here set as a to-do this is a specific teacher feature that only teachers can do can access so I'm going to write in a title and a description of what the children need to do if for older children I want them to make their own spelling quizzes I can set this as a quiz and they can continue to add their own questions in by if I select that make that quiz editable then the children themselves can add their own spelling in if I click next I'll give it a set date it might be for today's date I might give the children two days to complete this activity if I want it just to be done at school I can select this option here if I want it to be done for homework I can select that option there I can repeat this quiz every week if I want to or just click next and then assign it to my class or classes that are going to complete this quiz so if I drop down next to class one you can see the, the children in our class if for example some of these children are my very able children I would select a different spelling quiz for them so I could set it for individual children or for the whole class so I can essentially differentiate any to do's that I set so that to do has now been set let's come out of there let's now check if that activity has been set correctly for my class so if I go to my to do page here I can very easily see that there is the spelling quiz that I have created I can make changes to it by clicking the edit button and eventually when the children complete this work it will have a, an option as you can see at the bottom here I can see view folder or view the scores now here is an example of a, an activity that was set for a class that ended a few months ago so if I very quickly show the folder there is Alex's piece of work if I have a look at that let's click the mark button I can see which questions Alex got correct and which ones he struggled with if I want to view the scores for the class having completed this quiz I can click on the view scores button here which will take me to the data dashboard page which is this tab at the top here and it's showing me the to do for that particular quiz that I set back in June for my class so there is Alex Wilkinson one of the children in the class who's completed this activity he got a score of six with an accuracy of 60 percent these were the correct answers and these were the incorrect answers so it very clearly shows me how as a teacher I can then focus on the areas that he has missed if I want to export that to Excel I can do and it will create an Excel spreadsheet for me so I can show progress over time looking at the correct and incorrect answers there the breakdown by score and if there were more children in this class that had completed this activity then obviously it would have all of the names down the left hand side there so I'd be able to see at a glance all of the questions correct and incorrect across the class so so far in this webinar we have looked at the spelling resources the pre-made spelling resources and how to create your own spelling resources using the two quiz spelling quiz there let's now look back at the English topic resources and look at the grammar activities firstly there are dozens of pre-made activities that you can use with your class from year one to year six and some word level work specifically those focusing on year two and year one there are also five programs in the text toolkit which will enable you to create your own activities to enhance your children's text and grammar skills 
Let's look first of all at some of the pre-made grammar games that are available for you to use with your class or to edit to create something more bespoke. The hatching out grammar activities are specifically suitable for children in year one. Chicklets are year two, early birds year three, all the way up to soaring eagles in year six. Let's have a look at something in year four. So when you scroll across each of these activities, you can very clearly see which parts of grammar are focused on. If, for example, you wanted to focus on the use of commas and other punctuation to indicate direct speech, let's launch this to see what this particular activity looks like. So we have the text inside the rectangle here, the punctuation that's missing on the right hand side and the instructions at the bottom. Will you make my special window? asked Frank. So it will start with speech. That's a question. So the children can very easily drag and drop the correct punctuation into the text. And if it's correct, they will be able to move up to the next level and it will show very clearly their time taken and their accuracy. Now, if I want to use this particular activity as a teacher, as the starting point for my own bespoke activity, I can use the teacher's tools at the left hand side here. And I can see if I scroll through the levels here, here are the pre-made five levels. If I want to add my own level, I can click the arrow and it's ready for me to add in my own text here. And I can add in some trick words. And again, I can put my instructions down the bottom. So all of these pre-made grammar activities were created for you to use with your classes using these text toolkit tools. So now let's have a look at each of those these tools and see how you can create your own resources. I'm going to start with WordSpot. This is an activity that helps children to understand and recognize the different types of words. Here is an example that I have created earlier. Now, first of all, I'm going to ask the computer to guess which word types this text contains. So if I click the guess button there, it will hopefully pre-sort those for me. And if I scroll down the list, I can just double check that the computer has done that correctly. It's always worth checking that. And if I want to, I can change the font. I can add my options at the top here are choosing a background to add for my question. I can change the intro screen and I can change the time options on how long it will take the children to do this. Let's give them a minute to do this particular activity. In fact, this is quite a long, quite a few words in there. So let's give them two minutes. Let's add an image to the background. I can select a background color if I want to. And I can apply that to all the levels. At the moment, I've only got one level in my text. If I want to add level two, I can type in something new that the children can then check the word types. If I want to, for example, if I go back to level one, and I wanted to add adverbs here, I can click on the word types button and I can select adverbs. As you can see, there are other uh, word types there and you can also add your own if you want to. Let's add that in there and let's get the computer to guess one more time. So when I press play now, the children have two minutes to drag and drop the words into the correct boxes to sort the word types. So I'm going to re-save that again now with the changes I just made and overwrite that file. So that's now been saved in my teacher work folder. And again, if I want to set this as a task for my class to complete using their to-dos, I use the drop-down menu, click the share option, set it as a to-do, just as we did in the previous example with the spelling quiz. Let's now look at the next tool in the text toolkit that you can use to create your own activities. This close tool helps you to create activities to help children understand sentence structure and composition. Here's an activity I again created earlier. That word there, there is the word that I have highlighted and then I select use word. So that is the word that the children need to find will be closed out when I press play. So if I press play you easily see it's selected there with a line underneath it and they have a couple of options. Now those particular options, I added that option in there. Let's add in another option that might trick a few children. Now let's play that. Now there are two modes for this particular activity. Simple mode, as you saw when I played this activity, will add the line in where the word is missing. If you select hard mode, this one will just have a space in where the word is meant to go. 
and I actually want this to be simple mode and as you can see if I play again there is the word and if they use this correct option it will show you their accuracy and the time taken. Let's have a look at the third tool available to you in the text toolkit. This is the sentence pairs activity. This will help you to create resources for children to explore tense and enabling them to recognize verb forms. In every single one of these tools, there is a very helpful guide video just next to the exit button at the top right here. So if I select that. I'm going to use sentence pairs to make an act. As you can see, this is a very short video, two minutes, that will give you some examples of how to use this particular tool. There are also other videos on different facets, how to change the background instructions using examples, etc. Here is an example of one I created earlier, which explores past tense and future tense with a very simple sentence using the different verb forms. Here is an example of that. In this sentence, this is future tense. He sat on the wall. Is it? No, it's not. It's past tense. He sat on the wall. Now I will need to rewrite it in future tense. So I drag and drop the correct verb form into there and drag out the verb that doesn't fit. And you can see my score and the time taken. Now let's explore the fourth tool in the text toolkit. This is word combos. This helps children to understand sentence structure using different word classes. Here is a very simple example that I created earlier using adjectives and nouns. And I have added in my own adjectives that I want the children to focus on. And some nouns based on the text of Little Red Riding Hood. There are a number of different options for this particular tool. Bite size just enables children to explore adjectives and nouns. Snack size adds some verbs in there and there's some selected verbs. You can add your own verbs in there. The computer will suggest words for you if you want to use those ones as examples. Monster Munch is the next level up where you can add in your own adverbs as well. The computer will suggest some for you if you like. I actually want this to be a very simple bite-sized version just including adjectives and nouns. So when I press play it then enables the children to select the flashing word option, yellow, house, dry, tree, fat, grandma, yellow, woodcutter. Oh, there we go, I made four combos. And I select next, I can then write some sentences based on those particular combinations of words, adjective and noun. The last tool in the text toolkit is developing tray. This is where children can make guesses and assumptions based on the letters and text. There are numbers of different options here, pre-made examples for you. I could, for example, look at fog in November. If I press play, this is how the children would see it. Let's speed it up. It's going to develop the letters for me. And I can use this as a whole class activity or independently with individual children. The children need to select a letter and see if they can guess the, word, the letters that are missing. So here's an activity that I've begun to create for my class to complete. I've selected the text from Little Red Riding Hood. I have highlighted a number of the words and clicked the Head Start button, which will turn the words green, which basically means when the children reveal this text, those particular words will be visible immediately. Some of the words I have selected and clicked lock, and those are words that will not appear at all until I guess what the letters are. The entire word is blanked out. There is a very extensive text toolkit guide here which will guide you through how to use each of the tools in the text toolkit and some different examples that you could use with your class. So in this webinar we've looked at different ways that you can use the Purple Mash tools and resources, either the pre-made activities or the text toolkit to create your own spelling, punctuation and grammar activities for your class and how to set them as to-dos for your children to access simply and how you can use the data dashboard to assess the results of the children having completed these particular activities that you have created. I hope this has been useful. Please let us know if you need any support. You can email us at 
support at twosimple.com. Many thanks for listening.